Hi, hi guys. I am Vandan Gadia. In a previous video, we have seen we have we did some time series analysis uh, in R. So here is the next step. Uh, we have to for forecast the time series, which we gonna do in this video. So we have the forecast. We have, we did we will do do in uh, the tensor flow, which is uh, we will do we will use the LSTM model. Which is LS uh, long short term memory in the tensor flow. So we have three types of data data set. The first one is uh, J17 uh, from the Edward Aquifer, Texas. Uh, so we have first one is uh, J17, which is a site data where we gonna see we where we have data of the water level elevation, and we have other two data set which is uh, Comal and San Marcos. Which are the springs, and we have the discharge data of that uh, the, of the springs. So we have daily time series in this all the data sets. You can see here. I can show you some the J17, which is a site site's name site name, and these are the dates daily daily dates, and uh, th this is the water level elevation. So now we can we will start with the LSTM modeling and uh, time cast time series forecasting. So first of all we read the CSV which is J17 for J17 and we pass the date and make the date as impact uh, as index. So here we can see our data frame is water level elevation which is our prediction parameters and we have daily time series daily time series. So this is the uh, this is the different from the uh, conventional uh, neural networks, which is this one is uh, RNN, which is a recurrent neural networks. Neural networks. So we will do the uh, we uh, the there is a uh, two types of RNN. One is GRU and another another one is LSTM. So we're gonna use LSTM in this video, and we will build the LSTM model. So first of all, uh, for, for the starting. Uh, doing these things, we have to did do some uh, analysis on the data which we did in the last uh, last part which we did in the last video. So here we can see uh, we have to uh, check whether is a miss whether whether is a, uh, is there any missing value in the data. So there is no missing value in the data. In the data, now we can uh, we have to now for overview for the insight of the data we have to uh, we have to plot the data. For water elevation over time, so water ele water level elevation over time. So we can see there is a there is a train. We can we have to check for any trends in there, any seasonality or periodicity in in the data. So we uh, we already did all these things in the previous video, which is a uh, time series analysis in the in the uh, time series analysis in R language. But we are using Python for the forecasting because the Python is good for forecasting. So now we will start with the uh, LSTM modeling. So first we have to split the data into training and testing. Here I have the test size is 30% of the data. And the random state is 42 which is any random number. So uh, uh, by assigning the random state we are, uh, we are doing the thing whenever we run this uh, this when, whenever we run this the model will split the uh, this one split the data into training and testing in the same manner every time so after doing this we uh, here we can see there is we have the range from data we have range from like 600 to more than 700 uh, approx 600 to 700 so we cannot feed this data directly to LSTM model uh, because if we do this, then LSTM model can confuse and make a bad prediction, and we can uh, our model can fail. So we have to scale the data into zero and zero to one between zero to one range. So for that, we can use the min-max scalar to transform the data from this uh, uh, range to the zero to one. So we can do good prediction with the LSTM data. So after scaling the data, we still cannot feed the data uh, to the LSTM model because it is continuous data. So for the continuous data, we cannot feed the LSTM. So we have to make the out input output pairs. 
so for that we have to create one data set that we called as a here we have defined the function by defining the function i will make the one uh, prediction data set and uh, put the input batch of 10 so it will take the 10 10 10 10 inputs and it will create a one uh, one one set of pairs where this we will feed this lstm data into the batches in terms of batches with the base batch size of 10 so we'll uh, we'll uh, provide the data in the batches to the lstm so it will make a sequences of the batches and will make the set of pair so after creating this data we will uh, we will create the R uh, rnn lstm model which is recurrent uh, neural network uh, long short term memory so for the model we uh, provide the sequential we, we, we take a sequential and we stake the three layers so first one will be lstm second one also lstm the third one is uh, dense which is output layer so here in our input from the input we have this 42 neurons that is the random number based on the data size and this is a random number which is 42 and here i put written sequences is equal to 2 which means uh, you have to do the the every uh, this this will uh, do one thing that after every time step it will return the output sequence to the input here so it will uh, if if i put false there it will put all the batches and then at the last temp, the last time step, it will return the sequence. But here I kept true, so it will uh, it will do the whenever we provide the batch, it will take output sequence and uh, return it. So, so uh, that is important. So here and the and pro, uh, assign the input shape, and we have one feature here because we have only one parameter to predict. So that's why we keep uh, feature as one. And in the LSTM. In LSTM, the forget get, input get, and output get will automatically defined and updated by the LSTM. Uh, automatically defined and updated in the LSTM, and also the uh, LSTM has some behavior parameters, which is activation function and the recurrent uh, dropout rate. Where uh, so here we could uh, define an uh, one other, another layer of dropout layer here, here we can uh, use the uh, another layer which is dropout but uh, lstm already has dropout rate so we can do we can skip that part and uh, lstm will define on the input in based on the input data what should be the forget and what should be the keep so so and the L we have uh, output in the range of 0 to 1 so lst keras will use the sigmoid function which is default function for the this uh, 0 to 1 ranges so after this we're fitting the model and we keep the 10 10 iteration which is epochs and i want to know how many law how how model is training so i just uh, plot the loss versus uh, epochs which is iteration so after uh, you can see after 7 8 epochs it, uh, there is a very minimum loss, very little loss uh, in in the model, in the prediction. So here is the architecture of the model. Here you can see 43 parameters in the output layer. We have 43 parameters in output layer, and uh, now now we I already trained the model. So we'll do the testing on the uh, testing, uh, evaluating the model in the testing set. So here you can see we have, I've just put, a I just put the losses here. So first one is train loss and testing loss. So here test loss is less than the train loss. So it is good for uh, we, our model has made a good uh, prediction and uh, we have to transform this scalar data we get the output in scalar data so we have to inverse transform it to the original data and we can calculate the uh, root mean square which is 0.45 in this case and we can plot this data which is actual versus predicted this is graph and we can if we see closely there is a slight difference between the actual and predicted so uh, more uh, we have we did good prediction here so also this is the same for the common spring also so you can see this is two the same as the 
uh, J17 side data, but here some NA values. So we have to interpolate uh, this 49 values. And now we can see there is a zero. So we already interpolate all this value and we did all the same things. But uh, here in the model, I put 85 neurons here and the 15 inter uh, iterations here. And here also you can see after 80 pox, it is uh, uh, only minimum, minimum uh, like little changes in loss. So here 80, uh, 86 also, 80, 86, we have 86 parameter in the output layer. And here also we have some test loss is less than train loss and we have our root mean square is 283 and this is the actual versus predictor glass we have to see closely to see the differences same uh, we did same for the same Marcos and we just change the new number of neurons is 50 here and all the things are same and here is the root mean square is 292.93 and the loss is this 2, two less and here we can see slightly difference, more difference than the Comal and J17. So this is all for the LSTM training. So thank you.